Hey guys, it's Miranda here um, from Walking Your Worth. I uh, just getting on here, um, just kind of like going over a few things that God wanted me to run by you. Uh, it's pretty late where I'm at, so I apologize if I look really tired, but I'm going to get this knocked out. Um, I'm crushing goals right now, so like I said, I'm getting it done. But anyways, um, God wanted me to get on here and talk about, you know, your come up and, you know, how basically when um when he wants you to look your best and how he wants you to, you know to have beauty for your ashes basically what that means is you're not going to look like your past you're not going to look like you know dingy you're not if you used to to do drugs you're not going to look like you know sunken in face you're going to start putting on some weight so that you you know don't look like you know you haven't eaten in about a few weeks um Excuse me. If you are someone who just didn't take care of themselves with hygiene, uh, maybe you were in depression or something like that. You know, when God restores your heart and things, you're going to be coming out, you know, taking care of yourself. You're going to be looking a lot better. And that's because God will not be mocked. Um, I forget what verse that is. But with that being said, he, you know, God is a marvelous God. Like he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if you are a child of the King and you accept Christ as your savior in your heart, and if you guys ever need help with that, please comment below. Um, and while we're at it, just go ahead and hit the, uh, the like button, hit that bell, hit the notification. That way you guys don't miss a video of mine and you'll always be updated when I do a new video. So, um, thanks for stopping in. But anyways, um, back to what I was talking about is um, when God's giving you beauty for your ashes, you know, if you're a child of the King, you know, you are a reflection of Christ. And even though, and what that means is it may not be like in the way that you look entirely, but you know, Christ, like we are to Im imitate him. We are to reflect him. We are to basically become him over time um, little by little as the years go by. And that means with our knowledge, the way that we think, because God says his ways of thinking, um, the way that he thinks and his ways are different from ours. They're, you know, they're, they're higher. So they're better. They're just amazing. And it's not what we would normally choose for ourselves. It's what God knows is best. And sometimes that means hardship. Sometimes it means not confusion, but I mean a time frame where um, God puts you in a position where you have to turn to God and, um, you can't rely on other people. You can't rely on other resources and you have to go to the main source of your soul, which is Christ. You know, he established you, he created you. So if you are, I don't know, it doesn't really matter how old you are, but I mean, whether you are trying to get ahead in life or you're trying to, you know, start a family or you're trying to build that relationship and turn it into a marriage, like you are going to need Christ through that throughout every step of the way. It does not matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It does not matter what you believe in as far as um, what church you go to. Like you are always going to need Christ, like period. And the only way that we are going to come up higher is to become like Christ. You know, like I used to think that, I didn't need to spend time putting on my makeup and doing my hair and all that stuff because, you know, I had a really traumatic experience happen to me about five years ago. And even though it was so long ago, you know, it took me almost four years to recover from and to get out of the mindset that I wasn't worthy and to get out of the mindset that I wasn't valuable or loved or anything like that. And God, you know, through his grace and him picking me up and pulling me out of that pit of you know, depression and anxiety and feeling like I'm not, you know, the best that I could be, um, talking to the wrong guys and hanging with the wrong girls, you know, whatnot. Uh, not that they were bad people. It was just, they couldn't fix me. They couldn't help me the way that God could. And that's where that is God's job. That is his job to do, not ours. And even in a church, it's like, yeah, we can go to those people, but it's like, it's Christ at the end of the day, or technically should be throughout all the day. Um, that is really leading and guiding us closer to be like him and closer to healing, closer to being established in our goals and pulling us out of the pits of despair and the pits of hell that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis when we, you know, exhibit, 
um, the absence of God. And I don't know if this is making sense to you guys. I'm not trying to throw big words. I'm just trying to, I, know, I just, I let the Holy Spirit talk right now. So I'm sorry. <laughs> like, um, I'm even shocked by some of the words I'm using right now, but, um, that's just how he is. Like, he's so good like that. And the Holy Spirit is helping me deliver this message because like I said, it's very important that you guys understand that when you're coming up and you're getting beauty for your ashes, it's the whole point is for you to evolve into some like the newest version of yourself. It's like a snake when they shed skins, it's not the same skin. Um, and they kind of like go about their business, but it's like every so often they have to, you know, basically shed the old skin and same thing for us. You know, there's going to be different seasons throughout our life where, uh, we might listen to one type of music and then as we get older or go through certain things, we might, you know, migrate to a different genre of music or we might like, um, I don't even know, like different foods over the years. We might like, um, different activities. We might like different clothing styles. So it's like, these are just the outward things and God, you know, even though that's a good thing to have change and variety on the outside, you know, like our hairstyles and for women, our makeup styles, our jewelry, for men, some jewelry and their clothes, um, maybe like the types of vehicles they have, you know, these are just outward seasonal things, but you also have to consider what's in the heart. Like, you know, are you transitioning from bitterness to becoming better? Are you transitioning from being angry all the time to learning how to, you know, have self-control and be quick to listen and slow to anger? Are you developing Christ-like, you know, habits and Christ-like mindset and Christ-like character over the years? Are you still mastering that? Are you still growing and working on it? Because once you excel in one area, God's like, okay, now we got that one done. Now we're going to go work over here. So you're never really finished growing ever. Like you're, you're not going to arrive and then you're just done with your training or done with your learning or done with your, your lessons. Like there's always something to be learned. There's always something to involve in. There's always something to improve in. And until you kind of grasp that, like it is hard to grasp because it's like very easy for most of us to just think that, you know, like, oh, I learned this about God. And just as soon as you think, you know, God, he's going to switch something up on you and you're going to see a whole new side of him. So it's like, it's not really a bad side. It's just, uh, for instance, I, and I'm going to be doing a different video on this soon, but, uh, I told people in one of my podcasts, uh, which is, uh, faith strong. If you go on anchor or Spotify and, uh, I told people that you could not be a blessing if you're broke. And God kind of made me eat my words and it wasn't like a prideful thing that I said. It was just, I've been super broke and I've been super content with making a lot of money in my life. And it's like, God just kind of like, he used what I said and he's like, oh, I will show you how you can be a blessing without having money. It's just, you got to use the natural gifts that God has given you and turn it into a profit. You know, like you can't, um... I used to say that if you were broke, that you couldn't bless others like financially. And that may be so, but I didn't, I never even once thought like I used to think back then when I said this it was about months back of 2021, um, probably like summertime, June or July, I think I made a comment about that. And I said, you know, if you are broke, you can't really bless others other than telling them, you know, like God bless you or let me pray for you. Um, Maybe, you know, throwing in some change here and there, or maybe uh, running some errands for some people. And at that point, that's all I thought, you know, you could really do if you are, or, or like words of encouragement. Like, I didn't even think anything about like natural gifts. Like I never, didn't even cross my mind. So now that I am at my brother's house and I've gone a few months, you know, not working for anybody but service, you know, giving service to God and just kind of doing what he wants me to do and helping my, my brother out here at the house, I realized, you know, my brother really needed my help. My brother, you know, he was kind of struggling with keeping things clean. He uh, was kind of in his own little funk. And I realized, you know, it kind of made me mad at first because I was like, man, he just kind of seemed lazy. He seemed like he didn't care. And then God reminded me, he was like, 
did you were you lazy? Did you not care when your when your foot was injured completely and you didn't have any help? And I was like, oh man, God got me there. <laughs> He's good. He got me there. And so I started, you know, considering the possibility that, you know, what if my brother isn't being lazy? What if he just really is so overwhelmed because he does his house got so messy and he didn't know how to clean it and maybe he felt scared or just like ashamed to ask for help and he just really could not bring it in him to say, "Hey, you know, sis or hey mom, you know, could you guys come over and help me for a day?" And my my brother's not like a slob or anything. It was just you know, he was kind of going through almost like a midlife crisis, I guess. Um, I don't even know. It's not like a, like a horrible crisis. It was just, I think he just felt a little lost and he just felt like um, he didn't really know how to handle, you know, what was going on in his life and why certain things weren't working out. And he didn't really want to talk about it to, you know, any of the family members or professional help. And like I said, this is part of his journey. This is his step. And I had to remember that. Like God reminded me of that. And so I realized, you know, I don't need to be judging my my little literal brother, you know, for something that I've gone through myself. And then it occurred to me, God placed me here because, like I said, when God blesses you as you come up higher. See, I thought I was going backwards because I landed back in my brother's house. But really what it is, is God was using me still like he was using me to take the time to get my brother's house in order to really thoroughly clean. And if it took a couple months of doing it, then so be it. Did it mean I have to be broke for a while? Yeah. I mean, I could have gone to other jobs, but that's a different story because like I said, y'all may not agree on everything, but I'm just going to warn you right now. Again, you can judge all you want, but God will reveal to you the truth at some point. He done it to me. He'll do it to you that he's in the business for that. So just be wise with your judgment there. Because like I said, uh, not everything is the way that it seems. And speaking of that, you know, that's just like the, the, the beauty for your ashes. Like my brother does not really deserve my help. You know, it was his mess. He had all this going. I didn't make that mess. But God used what I was good at. He knew that I was good at cleaning. I'm good at organizing. And to those who watch this who think I'm not, it's like, again, that's the past. It's like God taught me. He renewed my mind. He allowed me to learn what I needed to learn to have those skills. And then once I mastered those skills and I started putting them to use and I was starting to get a little better at them, now God, you know, moved me and I ended up back in my brother's house because God meets a need with a need. And I was able to help my brother with his problem. And, you know, God calls us to not get weary in doing good. And he says that, you know, we are basically, he blesses us so that we can bless others. And I didn't realize it until a couple months in that that's what God was doing those whole time. I mean, there's other reasons why he has me here, but it's like, I'm over here in the beginning excuse me guys, getting all upset because it's like, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, my life is passing by. I'm missing out on things. Um, why can't my brother just, you know, do what he needs to do? And it would just make me really angry. And then I realized, you know, just like I had my part of the journey, I might be a little further along than him as far as like, um, my walk with Christ and whatnot. But even I needed help with my apartment, you know, before I had to move back in with him. Even I needed help cleaning. Even I had stress. Even I felt overwhelmed. And so me going through all of that and then knowing what that feels like on the other side of it, being that person who needs the help. Now when I'm in his house and I have the ability, I'm not injured anymore. I have the ability to be mobile, to move around. Now... I can be a blessing to someone else. If my brother needed my help, then I need to, you know, take it to God with how I feel. Um, it's okay if I felt angry. It's okay if I didn't understand. It's okay if I felt confused, but I still need to be in, be in prayer about it. I still need to be going to God about it. And I still need to try my very best to not judge as harshly. Like instead I should be praying to God and say, God, please reveal to me, which is what I did. Um, later on, I ended up doing this. I said, God, please reveal to me why I'm here. Please reveal to me what I'm supposed to be doing for my brother, because it's like, I can tell he needs help, but he won't ask me for it. Um, 
And all God kind of reminded me is that maybe he doesn't know how. Just like when we go to God, sometimes we don't even know how to ask God for the help that we need. Um, and he blesses us still. So just something to keep in mind on that. And, you know, like his house has been coming along a lot better and it's not because of me turning it in there. Like, it's not about me. It's bigger than me. It's just me. God is using my ability to know how to clean and organize, to get it picked up for my brother, to get it cleaned up so that it can be a fresh new start, a new fresh wind for my brother and myself. And then from there, it's like, you know, things, it's like he can kind of relax and kind of like take a breather and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't deserve that. But, you know, like she's in here, she's cleaning and he's thanked me plenty of times. So it's like, you know, I can just see a whole different side of my brother because why things are getting taken care of the way that they needed to, that he know they needed to, but he just didn't have the energy or he didn't have the time or he just maybe didn't have the resources or the knowledge that he needed to get the task done. So, and that's where God says two are better than one. So it's like, you know, as you come up higher, this is where you got to realize that it is good if you are around people that are better than you. If you're around people that, um, I don't know, if you're like doing a mentorship or something that, you know, the whole goal is kind of like Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was an older woman who was able to, you know, lead and guide Ruth to Boaz. Um, they had to travel quite a distance and they get to the destination they needed to go. Um, Ruth needed a job. So like she, you know, talked about Boaz's field. Ruth goes into that field, not knowing that was going to be her husband. And, you know, sure enough, she ends up working for that person, Boaz. And lo and behold, Boaz ends up falling in love with her. And there's like a step process of how they like back in the day did their marriage ordeals and stuff. And, you know, a lot of that never would have happened if one, Ruth wasn't willing to, let go of the old life and, you know, cause they all lost their husbands and stuff and tag along with Naomi back to her home homeland and see what was over there and to serve God. Cause she said, your God is the God that I'll serve. Um, your God is my God. And so she meant like, you know, actual Abba God. And so Ruth went with Naomi. Naomi went back there. Uh, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this stuff, but like I said, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. I'm not, I'm just trying to like quickly go through it as a, as a quick cap, just because like I said, it kind of ties in with what I'm saying. Uh, Boaz really wanted to be with Ruth and you know, he knew there had to be a certain order, a certain step. Uh, it wasn't like they were just kind of like coming together and just instantly being married. It was like, no, Ruth was actually working in the field. Like she was earning her money. She was, um, earning favor through the sight of Boaz, like he was just watching her, studying her. And, you know, even though it seemed very little, like for her to be working for Boaz, being like the CEO, you got to realize Boaz needed workers, he needed help. So every little bit helped. She needed a job, she needed something to do. She was like, you know, trying to start her life over. So like God used her to a need meets a need used her to be an employee for Boaz, which helped him keep money coming, you know, for the crops. And then sure, sure enough, he ended up letting her have some of that for free, basically, um, I think is how that went. Um, and not just for her, but also for Naomi. So like, you know, Naomi helping Ruth, she, it wasn't for in vain, you know, like God made sure she got taken care of as well. And then Ruth and Boaz ended up, you know, uniting and becoming married and, it's just an amazing story. Y'all need to read it. It's just the book of Ruth. But, uh, so anyways, um, sorry, I was trying to see what, uh, God was saying. Cause I, I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me something, but yeah, that's basically what he was doing in my life with me and my brother, like not being like Ruth and Boaz, but what I mean is like, you know, my brother had a need, he needs it met. Um, he didn't know how to, you know, handle it. I'm, you know, trying to, I wasn't initially starting my life over. Um, before I moved in with my brother, like, I mean, I went through about three shutdowns because of COVID and whatnot. Um, so I guess technically, I guess I was kind of starting over because I was trying to do culinary arts and instead of doing, you know, factory and warehouse, because that's all I've ever known. 
And so like as you're coming up higher, you know, I'm also working on my online businesses and stuff. You know, God's been calling me to change little by little and keep coming up higher and higher and higher. And so that's why it felt like I was going backwards because I lived with my brother before I got my apartment and that was three years ago. And then after the three shutdowns, I ended up coming back here because I obviously couldn't keep up with everything. Even though I was trying, I started paying nothing but bills um, that were like rent, utilities, essentials, stuff like that. And then it got to a point where I was just paying for food and I'm thinking, God, like I'm trying to be responsible. I'm trying to pay the right thing. Why is this not working out? And he didn't really answer much. So I was just like, okay, like I'm just gonna have to trust him, which was really hard to do. So then I move in with my brother. It was kind of a disaster and it was kind of like, God, I feel like I don't deserve this. I don't know why you had, I felt like this was, are you punishing me? Like, <laughs> you know, like, and then I realized this is part of coming up higher. It's not going to be always beautiful yet. You know, part of the process is messy. Part of the process is transition and it's kind of, you know, the old meets the new and it's this tug of war type thing going on. And there's a lot of friction and tension. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of, you know, because you're breaking boundaries, you're breaking barriers. And God was breaking my mindset of thinking that, you know, because my idea of serving him is serving like, you know, pe people like you guys that are watching online or just serving people as far as like going to like a soup kitchen or serving, you know, like in the church or serving. Like I always felt like even though I know you can serve in the home, like, if I were to be, like, a mother, which I'm not yet, um, you know, God probably, he, I already know God will bless me with children. Um, I don't know if it'll be natural or not, but it's, like, uh, that's up to God because, like I said, I wanted kids at 23. I just turned 29, and I don't have them yet. But, like I said, it's God's timing when I do have them. So, like I said, that would be, be interesting if I could have them on my own. Uh, that's a whole different topic, but the point is, is that I kind of forgot along the way that, you know, being of service to God is first in the home. And so when he was moving me back in with my brother, it really, it didn't make sense at the time, but now that I have hindsight, it does make sense why he would want me to help my brother because my brother needed help. My brother you know, he was kind of going down a bad path. He uh, was just kind of feeling lost, feeling, you know, kind of lonely, kind of feeling, you know, like most people do. Just kind of like, where am I going with my life? What's going on? And I already found my purpose. I found what I need to be doing. And so I've been amped up and pumped up to and fired up to like serve God, you know, out in the world and just like, kind of forgot about home life and stuff because like I said, I don't have my own family other than like my brothers and my mom and my stepdad and all that. So being back in my brother's house and serving him, like it was in the middle of me like complaining and then all of a sudden just serving it hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, like, cause I remember God, the Holy Spirit brought to my attention, excuse me, that when God pulls you out of the pit, it's so that you can go back to the pit, not to be in it, but to pull somebody out. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I'm doing right now. Like I'm thinking I literally just cleaned my entire apartment. I got it so clean that it looked amazing. It almost even better than before I had it. And um, I then get moved into my brother's and it was like the complete opposite. It was not ready for me to be moved in. I had to clean so much. Um, my brother wasn't really willing to help me in the beginning. Like he was just too kind of depressed and overwhelmed and kind of partially didn't even care. And it's not that he was a bad person. It was just mentally, he was just so broken inside that it was like, I couldn't get him to do, you know, to help me. And then God reminded me that I am your help. Like I will help you. So I believe that's in Isaiah. Sorry, guys, I did not write any of this down because, like, I'm just on here just to be on here. Um, God just laid it on my heart to talk about this stuff, so I am. So anyways, like, it's kind of like the Ruth and Boaz situation. Like, the, a need meets a need. Boaz needed workers. Ruth needed a job. So my brother needed his house cleaned, and I needed to be reminded that you can bless somebody even when you're broke. 
And because like I said, I didn't have a job. I was trying to hold on to a job when I moved in with my brother. But unfortunately, you know, that kind of fell away to the side. Um, there was like a misunderstanding and it just didn't work out. And I was like devastated. So I was kind of scared to try going to get in a whole another job because it kind of dawned on me, well, what if God doesn't want me to have a job right now? What if there's something else he wants me to do? So I just had, it's scary to think that, that it's like, oh my gosh, that means I won't have money. And I'm like, oh, like, what do I do? And um, so I dared myself to go deeper with God and just really let go of trying to have a job, let go of trying to make money myself, just really check out and see what God wants me to learn and what he wants to teach me and just go deeper into this with God. Just really see God for who he is and learn what it is that he's trying to teach me. And like I said, um, God met the need with a need and my brother needed the house cleaned. I needed, my heart needed to be softened still because like I said, after losing everything, like my heart kind of got, you know, really hard. Like, um, I wasn't like cussing and raging and ranting all the time, but it was like, I was pretty angry. I did have some bitterness and kind of have some entitlement going on. You know, like I shouldn't have to deal with all this stuff and it's not my mess. And that right there is like, God, whatever you're going through, God's trying to prepare you for your next season. So for me, whatever that's going to look like, if God's wanting me to serve even more, this is on a deeper personal level, you know, of serving somebody by acts of kindness, you know, doing things for others when they don't deserve it and loving. And the, the best part about this whole experience is God was showing me how to love somebody the way that he loves us, the way that he loves me, the way that he loves you. And that is to do something for someone when they don't deserve it, to give them ultimate grace unconditional love. And that is so hard to do. Like it really is hard to do, especially when people don't deserve it, but God does it for us every single minute, every second of the day. So even if he's angry with you, even if he seems silent, he still, in, he still loves you. He's still in all of you. He just, he just wants you to come up higher. He wants you to be like him, you know, like he created you. You're his child. He wants you to imitate him. And, you know, for us, we do need trained, we do need disciplined, and we do need to be reminded oftentimes of who Jesus is and what God is like and to hear the Holy Spirit. And that's basically what all this was about was just, you know, um, for me to come up higher because, you know, in most of my videos, I don't look like this. Like I don't always have my hair looking nice. I don't have my eyebrows done or my makeup on. There's a lot of videos where I didn't because why? I kind of forgot about my own worth there for a while. Like I kept thinking, you know, I got so much on my plate. I'm doing so much that it's okay if I don't look my best because I'm trying to please God or I'm trying to um, do these other things that these other goals that I have in my life. And God had to take me back to a place where it was so simple. And he was just reminding me that it's okay. If the only thing that you accomplish today is looking pretty, <laughs> pretty and beauty on the outside is not the most significant thing. But he was just reminding me that it's like, I don't have to look like I did years ago. Like it's okay to take an, like a 30 minute shower instead of like a five minute shower to save money. It's like, it's okay. Like that's a poverty mindset. Take a 20 to 30 minute shower, shave your legs, you know, put on the cute outfit, do your hair and your makeup, smile, love yourself for who you are and who God's creating you to be, you know, embrace the journey, embrace God you know, tune into the Holy Spirit and really just live out each day for what God brings it. I mean, it's God's like he made each day. So rejoice in it. And like I said, lo and behold, before you know it, whatever you're supposed to learn, it's going to come to pass. Like you're going to, you know, you're going to overcome all the hardships and all the, all of the obstacles that you are going through. And the, the best part about this whole transformation when you come up higher with God is that th at the end of it, you're going to have beauty for your ashes because your mind's going to be renewed. Your heart's going to be renewed. You, you are doing like a true cleansing with God. And sometimes it requires fasting, not always with food. Sometimes it's things like social media. Um, 
just being obedient with Christ and, um, or to Christ and tuning into the Holy Spirit, reading your Bible. It doesn't have to be every day, but at least, you know, get into it as often as you can pray as often as you can over anything and everything and do it with Thanksgiving. Just, you know, give praise to God throughout the day. Be thankful for the little things and the big things. And, you know, just kind of, Whenever you get a chance, just tell God that you love him, you know, remind him that you do because he already knows that you do, but he want, he likes hearing it too, just like we do. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But, um, so yeah, as you come up higher, just know that the whole point of beauty for your ashes is that you're not going to look the same way anymore. People might actually not be able to recognize you just because like, as you come up higher with Christ, because you know, like you're, you're going on new levels. Like you're no longer seeing yourself the way that you did before. You're not, um, identifying yourself the way that you did before. And I might do a part two to this video just cause it already is at 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, guys, like I, I don't know, God just placed this on my heart to really open up and talk to you guys on a deeper level as far as what I've been going through. So I don't know what you've been going through, but again, if you really like this video, if you like this channel, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, <coughs> excuse me, hit the notification button, that bell, so you don't miss a video, and I will see you guys next time. All right, remember to walk in your worth and stay gorgeous and glorious. Bye.